You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Ask Drone You. As always, my name is Paul. And I'm Rob. Thank you for spending a few minutes of your day with us. We're excited to be hanging out with you. Definitely excited. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you to all the Drone U members. There's some new classes up you might want to check out. We're going to get right into today's question. Uh, I know this affects a lot of you. And also, the industry has kind of evolved on this particular topic. But uh, what happens when you're in an area and DJI says you can't fly, even though the airspace is uncontrolled and... According to the FAA, you can fly it all day long. There are, I think, three potential options for you. We'll go over if you're flying DJI, what you can do, and we'll go over if you're flying other drones, how there's essentially uh, very few other drones that really don't have geofencing. So it'll be an interesting uh, topic. Also, there's an update here too on the QEP program through DJI if you are flying DJI. So we'll go over that as well. Today's show is brought to you by our DroneU mapping classes and flight mastery classes. If you are looking to create orthomosaics, if you're looking to build georeferenced maps and models for whatever industry, and you want to learn why desktop-based software still provides a much greater accuracy simply by following the rules of photogrammetry. Well, you won't want to miss this class. We're actually extending it a day if you want to join us for an additional day. After lots of feedback and surveys, students have asked for a little bit more time to go over additional projects. So we're going from seven exercises to 10, and I don't think that you are going to want to miss it. We'll be having this class at our new Colorado location. And frankly, you won't want to miss it because the views and the people are an, are amazing. So check it out, <laughs> thedroneu.com. But let's go ahead and get right into that question. Hey guys, what's up? Big fan of the show. Um, so the, uh, the question I have is, I'm trying to fly over a prison that has been shut down. It is no longer in operation. And uh, DJI has it marked as a red zone. I went to the FA uh, Drone Zone website to try to apply for a, a Lance, and uh, it's in clear airspace. So, whenever filling out the application for the Lance, uh, I can't put it in an airspace that it's, it's you know violating, which it isn't. So. I tried to contact DJI through DJI Help, and they had me go to flysafe at DJI.com, which I filled out a question for them, and I'm waiting for a response. But I'm also looking to you guys for any insight you might have. It's a Pittsburgh prison. I can uh, attach the uh, coordinates in my email back to you guys. Thanks a lot. Look forward to hearing from you. Thanks, John. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate that this is even an issue. I mean, if you think about it, it's ridiculous, but it is. So what would Paul do? Well, you know, recently, Rob, we had the privilege of being able to fly um, in restricted uh, airspace. Actually, the White Sands Missile Range airspace has been extended. So New Mexico really does have the largest no-fly zone in the whole country. Um, and that said, working with DOD and Air Force, we were able to get simple um, authorizations to fly, which was really nice. And, you know, Rob, I was worried going down to this particular ranch, how DJI would uh, potentially shut our drones down from flying in said airspace, which Mm -hmm. was quite interesting because in all honesty, um, there is a new action. I think it's actually been around for a few years where it says, hey, you're in a no fly zone, blah, blah, blah. But you can straight up say, I have full permission to fly or this is an error and I can fly here. Now, One of those two actions requires cellular service, which we did not have out there. The first action, I simply said, I have permission to fly and take all responsibility and was able to fly. Um, But I think DJI has different classifications of these red zones because I was in one of their red zones as well. 
Um, that said, if you are trying to fly in a particular red zone and you can't bypass the action through the drone um, by claiming that it's an error or that you have permission to fly there, I believe there are three options for you pilots, especially for those pilots flying DJI. Option number one is you can apply to void a red zone. We actually have a video for drone U members in the site about how to apply for a red zone. It's very simple. Um, the one hang up that I see a lot of pilots getting stuck on, Rob, is the fact that once you upload this area uh, to the drone to fly, it essentially is going to allow you to fly in that area, but then negate every other area in the United States. So you can't forget to turn off that license to be able to fly outside of that area. Whoa. So, yeah, well, yeah, it's a common kind of hiccup, common, um, hmm. you know, uh, item that's overlooked. I've, I've had the same issue myself, frankly. Now, acquiring those licenses to fly in red zones uh, took us about a day or two. I can't remember exactly how long, but it was a pretty seamless operation. There's a second option for drone pilots, and I believe that this is only for like... Let me stop you. Where is that option? Where, where do you originate that? sequence of events to get that done on the first option? Well, I would recommend checking out the video and membership, and then you go through DJI's portal, okay. and you explain essentially that it's either an error or that you do have permission to fly from the FAA. You provide your Part 107 certificate. Uh, you provide either the authorization or the fact, uh, something to show that it's closed. I think even a screenshot on Google to show that, hey, this prison is closed would probably be sufficient. Okay, um, but it's through DJI's website. Yes, that is correct. So it is through DJI's website. Now, that said, uh, frankly speaking, um, you have option number two, which is, uh, again, I think you're going to have to be part 107. I think you might have to be a respected or not respected, uh, established drone business, maybe even a larger one, and essentially apply for what they call the QEP or the Qualified Entity Program, where they take geofencing off of your drone entirely, um, mm. which is kind of a nice thing to have. Um, we had a student actually send me the QEP application that he submitted and he was approved within a day. It seemed to work very well for him. Uh, we have been, you know, busy moving, but it's one of those things that I want to get out to our members and our props clients of here is how you can apply to get that QEP because I think it's going to be really important. Um, we do have that for our public safety stuff, uh, but it's a very different process because it's a government organization. Whew. Option number three <laughs> is uh, you can go to drone-hacks.com and you can actually change the parameter on the drone to negate its ability to even see no-fly zones. So you essentially change one parameter and the drone never even checks for no-fly zones anymore. Now, there's pros and cons to this. Um, if you have an older drone, say a Phantom, Mavic 2 Pro, etc., and you're not planning on updating the firmware anytime soon because everything works just fine and you don't want features taken away or um, any changes, then you'll be fine. Now, if you're working with a lot of third-party apps, uh, if you're working with mapping missions, Leechee, stuff like that, you're going to want to make sure that the firmware addition that you are going to have to use to negate no-fly zones is actually compatible with these third-party apps or these SDK apps because sometimes it can cause issues. There's a couple of apps that I know off the top of my head that this has caused issues. Uh, now, for me, using Pix40 Capture, I have not had these issues issues. Um, the one thing I will notice, though, is for some reason, on the older firmware that is necessary to do the uh, removal of geofencing, sometimes on the Phantom specifically, it can cause the gimbals to wear faster because um, the coding and software behind the gimbal is slightly different than the newer stuff. Hmm. to negate um, essentially, um, what is it called? Overheating in the motors and too much torque load and, and whatnot. So I have seen that particular issue. 
Um, for those of you who are like, well, can I even see if my drone is capable of removing geofencing? Well, you can go on drone-hacks.com's website and you can actually see right away if your firmware is compatible or if you can downgrade the firmware, which we had to do on one of our phantoms and it worked fine. So that said, I think those are your three options. Um, I think there is also one more option, but might not be plausible for everyone. As many people know, a lot of drone manufacturers outside of DJI do not have geofencing because this has probably been the number one complaint of DJI pilots. So when flying drones like Autel, when flying drones like Skydio, when flying other American-made drones, you'll see and find that there is no geofencing and you would not run into this issue. So all that to be said, I think you actually have four options. You can check out our website for all of you members out there. There is a video on exactly how to do this. And um, I, I hope that this helps. I will say um, sometimes I'm guilty of this as well. I'll fire up my drone in a red zone and it will say that you can't fly there. And then I'll just give up and kind of stop. I know a lot of pilots do that. I recommend taking one more step. Try to turn on the motors with the startup sequence of taking the sticks and going down and in. Oftentimes, that's what actually causes the prompt box to show up on your phone mm. or tablet to say, hey, do you have permission to fly here or is this an error? And typically, you can override it. Interesting. Most times. Interesting. A lot of people don't get to that point, though. Yeah, because they get the message and then just... Give up. I'm done. Mm -hmm. They don't try to actually fire up the motors. Firing up the motors is what I found to get that prompt to show up and say, hey, I can fly here. So Awesome. So I think John is trying to fly this mission like in about a week. So it's, well, you said the first option can be done in a day. Mm -hmm. So that's doable. QEP and then, two to three, yeah. Okay. And then obviously the hack is whenever you can get it done. Yeah, 100%. Now, there is another option, but I think uh, we'll save uh, the tinfoil hat options uh, for another show. So, <laughs> <laughs> Darn it. Get it? Get it? Wink, wink. Anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I think that's going to do it for us today. We're trying to keep these short and to the point to help all of you. Uh, we did get some questions in regarding our new ranch and office space. Um, we're actually going to have two office spaces in here. Who knows? how long we'll have the satellite space at the ranch and then our main new studio which we're building up and uh, we're very excited for that thank you to everyone's support along the way it's definitely been kind of a it's definitely been kind of like a, a rebuilding period for us a transition period which has taken away a lot of time to build content but uh, I've been building new content this week I'm excited to really go over some great new stuff that's coming out and uh, deliver some value and help all of you take flight wherever you need to however you need to if you're not a drone you member check it out the drone that's gonna do it for us today my name is paul i'm rob this is ask drone you <laughs>